Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah So today we are Before we start, I'm going to speak about A quick recap, what we did last lesson We learned about The special times to make dua So um, Friday before Maghrib In the last third of the night When it's raining At the end of the salah In sajda And many other times. Uh, we also learned it's good to do du'a facing the qibla. It's also good to raise the hands in du'a and also doing du'a in sajda. These are the fantastic positions to make du'a. We start off the du'a by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioning the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioning how perfect he is, etc. And then remember we did the two du'as that contain the greatest name of Allah. So I put that in the group so you can open it up and learn that dua, inshallah. I need to learn one of them myself. Um, so those two duas, they mention the greatest name of Allah. And wh whoever asks Allah using his greatest name, then he gets what he wants. He gets the dua accepted. So once we do that, then we send blessings on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We say, Allahumma salli ala, Allahumma barik ala, you know, the one we read in Salah. Or we can say, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Nabina Muhammad. So we send blessings on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we start with our dua. And then we can end with blessings on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even one of the scholars mentioned, you can do it in the middle too. Okay. And then we talked about Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah three times and the Jannah will do a dua. Asking Allah to protect you from Jahannam three times. Jahannam will make a dua. Doing dua behind somebody's back. And the angel will make a dua for you. When you ask for Jannah, ask for which Jannah? Anybody? Which Jannah do we ask for? Which is the top Jannah, the highest Jannah? Anybody want to type? What is the name of the highest Jannah? Fantastic, Riyan. And Abdullah. Okay, Rayyan got the right answer. And who else did? Okay, Rayyan, yeah. Okay, so asking for Jannah to the those, it's the top Jannah. It's where we all want to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us in Jannah to the those. Also, we learned that you get a deed for every Muslim you ask for forgiveness for. So if you do a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the Muslims, then you're going to get a deed for each Muslim that there is. So a billion deeds. And then if you ask for the Muslims who have passed away, then so much more, inshallah. Um, and also, lastly, I want to mention, we learned that four things happen um, when you make a dua. Number one, it could be your dua just gets accepted like that. However you did the dua, it gets accepted. Another one is, another response is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that what you asked for there was not good for you. It was going to give you problems afterwards. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you something better. So you don't get what you asked for, but you get something better than you asked for. It's going to be better for you. The other one is something that was going to happen to you bad. It gets removed. So something where you're going to have a bad accident or something. And because you made dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that bad thing from happening to you. And the last one is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves it for you until the hereafter. You get the reward in the hereafter. And how amazing would that reward be? Because that reward is never going to end. Okay? So today, I want to speak about something. But I want to start it off with mentioning a hadith. So there was a sahaba called Talha. Talha, he mentioned that two people in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they became Muslim, two people. At the same time, they became Muslim. One person would spend his time fighting in jihad, fighting in religious wars for Allah's sake. So one person was busy fighting in wars in jihad for Allah's sake. The other person, he didn't fight too much. He, you know, didn't fight too much. Now what happened is the person who fought in Allah's cause, he got killed, shaheed. And the other person, he stayed alive for one more year and then he died. Okay, so the person, one person, he got killed in battle and became shaheed, which is what a fantastic thing. 
Islam shows so much reward for a person who got killed in Allah's cause. The second person, he just lived another another year, another year, and then he died one year later. Okay, so now Talha, he said that I saw in a dream that the, that we're at the gates of paradise. We're there at paradise. Me and those two other people are there at the door of paradise, and I was with both of them. And someone came out of paradise and said, "You, the person, you you're allowed in." Who was he talking to? The person who didn't die shaheed. He died one year later. And then afterwards, he came out again and he allowed the person who was shaheed to come in so the person who was shaheed went to jannah after the person who died one year later a normal death so and then he said to talha he said you go your time has not come yet okay you your time hasn't come yet you go so when talha woke up he was amazed that the person who died fighting in allah's cause he actually entered into jannah after the person who died a normal death but just lived one year extra so it was amazing yeah this is amazing news he's telling the people he's telling the people it's amazing news i've had a dream like this so the information got to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard about this dream and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what are you surprised at they said oh messenger of allah one strove in jihad and was martyr and the other one entered paradise before we don't understand Normally, the person who fights in jihad, he goes to Jannah first. Okay, so we didn't understand what was going on. The Prophet wasallam said, "Did he not remain behind for one more year?" The person who died afterwards, the Prophet wasallam is saying, "Did he not remain behind for one more year?" They said, "Yes, he did." He wasallam said, "Did he not reach Ramadan, fast and pray with such and such a number of prostrations in the year?" They said, "Yes." The Prophet sallallahu said, so the difference between them is greater than the difference between the heavens and the earth. The difference between them is greater than the difference between the heavens and the earth. And that was a shock to me. This hadith, when I read, when I read this hadith, when I heard of this hadith, I was like amazed that really, is Ramadan that powerful that this person who died one year later, not in battle, he just died a normal death, but he lived one more Ramadan. He lived one more year, he lived one more Ramadan. He went to Jannah before. So this shows us the importance of the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is so very important. Um, yes. So let's look at Ramadan now. What has gone of Ramadan? 20 days have nearly gone. 20 days are nearly up of Ramadan. We may have had plans, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. I wanted to read one juz of the Quran every day. We've not done that. I wanted to do X, Y, Z. We've not done that. We've been slipping. We've been sleeping. We've been making mistakes. And we're here at this point. And we might be thinking that, oh, no, I've not done much in Ramadan this time. It was lockdown. It was different. I couldn't go to the masjid. I was a bit lazy at home. I've just not had the Ramadan that I normally have. Okay. But I want to give you some good news. The good news is this. The good news is the best of this month is still ahead of us. The best of this month is still ahead of us. These next 10 days are better than what has gone. So if we have messed up, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about what's gone. Look at what is remaining, the best 10 nights of this month. Okay? Alhamdulillah, somebody said with that one sparrow every day. Fantastic. That's very good. Okay. So the night I want to speak about is the night of Al-Qadr. The night of Al-Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this night. It is hugely special night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, we have sent it, i.e. this Quran, down in the night of Al-Qadr. And what will make you know what the night of Al-Qadr is? The night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months. Therein descend the angels and the Ruh, i.e. Jibreel, by permission, by Allah's permission with all decrees. There is peace until the appearance of dawn. So this um, surah that I read is the one that starts off with, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. 
وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر So the translation I actually read before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran down in the night of Al-Qadr What is the night of Al-Qadr? The night of Al-Qadr basically is the night of greatness Al-Qadr has a few translations I want to mention four inshallah One of the translations of this night of Qadr is that it is a night of greatness Number two, another one is the person who makes use of this night he becomes somebody who is great. Another explanation of this night, another explanation is it's a night of constricting. Qadr also means constricting, you know, tightening. Because what happens on this night is the angels come and there's so, so many angels. There are so many angels that come. And there's so many angels that exist that it becomes packed, it becomes jam-packed. There's hardly anybody anywhere to go where there's not an angel. So this is a night where the angels descend and so many of them. In fact, in a hadith it's mentioned, in a hadith it's mentioned, the heaven makes a noise like a groaning noise and it has a right to because there is no space, the width of four fingers, there's no space, the width of four fingers, except that there's an angel doing sajda there. So just look at the heaven, look, at, look up and look at the sky. You see the sky, how vast the universe is. There's not a place bigger than this where there's not an angel doing sajda. Now, how many angels is that? Trillions upon trillions upon trillions. There's another hadith that talks about the amount of angels. There's, you know, like we have Masjid al-Haram here. In Mecca, we have Masjid al-Haram where you do tawaf. You go around seven times. The angels have... A masjid like that as well, a house called Baytul Ma'mur, seventh heaven. And every day, 70,000 angels go around. And then another set comes, and another set comes, and that first set, that second set, they never return. So every day, 70,000 angels, and then the next day, another 70,000 angels, and none of them get their turn again. How many angels Allah SWT made? How many angels? Just very quickly, the, the hellfire has 70,000 handles. 70,000 handles which it is held by. Okay, handles is a rough, loose translation. Each of those handles has 70,000 angels on it. So how many, how many angels has Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala created? So this night is a night of constriction. There's so many angels, there's like no room to move. And also, one of the other means, meanings of Al-Qadr is that it is the night of destiny. A night where your life, what's going to happen to you this following year is written. You're going to earn money. You're going to have a job. You're not going to have a job. Is the coronavirus going to get you? Is it not going to get you? How is your living going to be? What food are you going to eat? How is your life going to be? Are you going to die before the year ends? Or not how are you going to die so this thing is written for everybody so we want to maximize the benefit while it's being written we want to be in sajda begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and give us another for those to forgive us all our sins we want to be crying and begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading the Quran etc etc while this is being written while this is being written okay so I want to go on to the other part of the verse the other part of the surah which is in it is a night better than a thousand months. Now, this is the night I want to talk about. It is a night. There is a night in these last 10 nights of Ramadan that are better, that is better than 1,000 months. So basically, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this particular night, whichever one it is, it's like you've been worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for over 83 years. 1,000 months is over 83 years. I think 83 years, and I'm not talking 83 years of somebody's life. Like, for example, we live a life of 70 years. Okay, one third we're asleep, one third we're working, 
every day we are that busy that we have only about two or three hours where we can actually do some proper, proper, pure worship. Yes, your day can all be worship if you have the right intention. But I'm talking about how much time do we have to read Quran, to read Nafal, to, um, you know, fast even. How much time do we actually dedicate in Islam? So out of that 70 years, maybe only five or 10 years are actually dedicated purely to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have this night, an opportunity, where if we spend it all worshiping Allah, then we get the reward of worshiping Allah for 83 years, pure, pure, pure worship, more than 83 years, solid worship. And I see this as an opportunity for us to overtake those people who we see who are doing so much for Islam. There's people who have thousands and thousands of converts that they've converted to Islam. There's people who travel all over the world doing talks, doing lectures, teaching the people. There's people who spend 20, 30 years studying under the scholars and then they become great scholars themselves. There's people who have, are doing so much, they're doing so much relief work. They're helping Muslims all over the place. Some are organizing madrasas and um, getting a lot of reward doing that. There's so many things that people are doing. How do we catch up to them? How do we catch up to people like that? Maybe one way to catch up to them is to really, really make these nights count even more than they can. Like, count, make them count completely, totally. Do something all the way through the night. And it will also help us catch those people who used to live hundreds of years of life anyway. The time of Nuh al-Islam, the time of Adam al-Islam, the people who used to live for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. How are we going to catch those people? So we have a special night that if we really work on this night, we've, it's a super bonus level. Just straight up it goes, straight up. Yeah? There may be people, they came into Ramadan like this, hear good deeds, hear bad deeds, drowning in bad deeds, drowning in bad deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. But because they actually worked in Ramadan and they hit Laylatul Qadr, they might end up like this after Ramadan. That's the, that's the reason Ramadan is here, to make us better people. Now they become better people and they continue those good practices and it's done that to them. On the Day of Judgment, worshipping on these nights and this night, they could save us on the Day of Judgment when the scales are like this. Some people's scales will be like this. Just one more subhanAllah would have done it. One more alhamdulillah would have done it. Okay, but there'll be some people who have scales bang on. They'll eventually be forgiven, but we don't want our scales like this. We want to worship Allah SWT so much, maximize these benefits, these times, so that we can be really, really high, inshallah, on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said about this night, he said SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam, in it there is a night that is better than 1,000 months. Whoever is deprived of its good, then he has truly been deprived. I, whoever misses out on this month, he has truly, truly missed out. He has missed out big time, big, big time. Because such a bonus came and he didn't take advantage of this bonus. And he, you know, he's missed it. And on the day of judgment, could be big, big, you know, results that he's missed. Imagine a person on the day of judgment. He's lived his life for 70 years and he's lived a good life. He's been reading Salah, he's paying his zakah, reading Quran, fasting in the month of Ramadan. He missed the Laylatul Qadr though. Imagine he missed the Laylatul Qadr. He was sleeping, he didn't really pay much attention, he missed it. Imagine he comes on the day of judgment with 70 years of worship. Quite good, 70 years of worship. Okay? And then he looks and he sees somebody coming with 2,000 years of worship. And he was similar age, he used to be in his class. He knew him. Like, what's going on with you? How come you got 2,000 years? You didn't live 2,000 years long. So how come you got 2,000 years worth of reward? Imagine. But then, you know, this person, 25 years, he hit Laylatul Qadr. He hit Laylatul Qadr for 25 years and he got 2,000 years of reward. So truly, you know, look at this hadith again of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever is deprived of his good, he has truly been deprived. Now let me give you an example. If I was to tell you all that you're going to get 10 million pound, 10 million pound after tax, okay? You're going to get 10 million pound. All you need to do is stay awake all of these next 10 nights. All of them. Stay awake. Just stay awake. Don't do anything. Just stay awake. And you're going to, at the end of it, get 10 million pounds, okay? With 10 million pounds, you don't need to work ever again. 
Okay, you can just relax all your life. Okay, from a work point of view, who wouldn't do it? I would be there first. I would get three alarms. I'd put all of them on. I'd get one of those stools that had just one leg on it. So if I fall asleep, I fall down and get back up again. Okay, I'd do something like that because ten million pounds is a lot of money. We understand the value of ten million pounds, but what about the value that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given of worship better than a thousand months? It's much, much more than this 10 million. This 10 million will finish one day, but that will remain forever. And even now, in these nights, it's even more important because the nights in the UK right now, we're in May, the nights in the UK are small. Six and a half hours we have of nighttime here, about. Six and a half years from, sorry, six and a half hours from Maghrib till the starting of Fajr is about six and a half hours. So six and a half hours is like 83 years. I want to break this down for you and show you what that means. That means one hour of worship is like 13 years worship. That also means one minute of worship is like two months of solid worship. That also means one second. One second is worth one day's of full worship, 24 hours, roughly the rough figures. One second is one day's of worship. So imagine on this night, we open our WhatsApp, and we look at our status and we look to see who's looking at our status, who's checked our status, for example. Or we just check the news, uh, you know, at night. We just check the news just to see what's happening with this lockdown and what's going on. I said, don't bother with that. It'll take you 10 seconds. 10 seconds means 10 days of pure worship you've missed. They'll never come back. They'll never come back. So I urge you all and myself not to waste any time in these 10 nights in order to find the little qadr. Now, Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she said, in the last 10 nights of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do is he would tighten his belt. You know what tighten his belt means? It means like buckle up. It's like turn on, you know, take out all the stops. Get on it 100%. That's what it means. Okay, he would tighten his belt. He'd really be on it. He would really be on it. Okay, that's the first description. Second description, she said, he would stay awake all of the night. All of the night he would stay awake. Now, let me just tell you the practice of the Prophet Wasallam. Normally, even in Ramadan, in the first 20 nights, was that Rasulullah Wasallam would go to sleep for a part of the night, and then he'd wake up in the last third, he'd wake up in the latter part of the night, and then he'd worship Allah. This is what would happen in Ramadan even, except these last 10 nights. In these last 10 nights, Rasulullah wouldn't go to sleep at all. He would do ghusl between Maghrib and Isha, and he would eat his dinner at Suhoor. Okay, it's another hadith. He would eat his dinner at Suhoor. That's how much Rasulullah knew the value of this night. Now, don't eat your food at Maghrib. Delay it to have a bit. Then delay it, you know, maybe you can have a bit now. Delay it till um, Suhoor. So it gives you an emptyish stomach to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all night. So he would stay awake all night and also he would wake up his family. So Rasulullah would tie his belt, he would stay awake all night and he would wake up his family on, these, on this night. Now, the next question is, when is the night? When is the night? So the night, Rasulullah was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the night is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when this night, this special night is. What happened is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he saw two people arguing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted the knowledge of the night from him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made to forget when this night was. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, perhaps this is better for you. So seek it on the, on the 9th, the 7th and the 5th. Either the 29th, the 27th, the 25th. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave some indication, okay, that when we should seek this night. So first of all, it was taken away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the knowledge, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, perhaps, perhaps it is better for you. Why? Why is it better for us that we don't know? Because I'm telling you, if we knew it was on the 25th, we'd do nothing in Ramadan until the 25th day came, the 25th night came, including myself. And then on the 25th night, I would do what I could to get that night. We'd only get the reward of Ezra Qadr. But this way, 
we don't know when it is so we do it all exert ourselves all for 10 nights in the whole year and we will catch not only Laylatul Qadr we will catch an amazing last 10 nights of Ramadan we'll get more reward okay so it's in the last odd nights of the last 10 nights so it could be on the 21st night could be on the 23rd night the 25th night the 27th night or the 29th night you can ask your parents when that will be inshallah 29th night it could be any one of them the majority of the scholars and the majority of the sahaba believed it was on the 27th night so if there's one night you're going to really make special make it the 27th but try to make them all because it could be on the 21st and it could even be on the even nights according to other hadith it could even be on the even nights so if you get all 10 you've guaranteed got the Laylatul Qadr and I wanted to speak about what things we could do on Laylatul Qadr but I don't have time for that because um, we run out of time what I will do I will send some of my recommended tips on the on the group to let you know what I would do you know on these nights I just want to end up with a few more things Aisha radiallahu anha she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam if I was to find this night what shall I do Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said say this dua Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni oh Allah innaka afuun oh Allah you are the forgiving you love to forgive so forgive me and the word used is afu afu basically means everything even the traces of the sin are wiped out even the traces of the sin are completely wiped out the sin is completely erased it's finished completely so keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua on this night also read Quran this is just for myself now read Quran read Salah make sure you read your Isha make sure you read your Fajr it would normally be in the masjid so you get the reward of the full night but now we don't have any masjid so just read at home in Jama'at cry in seclusion cry and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somewhere where nobody is in that room go and find yourself a room if you can where nobody is there and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cry and really mean it as though we're drowning ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to cry because whoever cries when nobody is watching him and he cries out of fear of Allah on the day of judgment there'll be a share of, of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there'll be certain types of people in the share of Allah's throne one of them will be the person who cried while he was alone he cried out of fear of Allah while he was alone so try to do that um, last thing I want to mention is this we have samosas we have kebabs we have chicken we have burgers we have so much food in Ramadan it's like opposite of what Ramadan was really supposed to be for Ramadan wasn't really a, supposed to be a, a month of eating but now whenever you say Ramadan you think yes samosas and kebabs and oh yes we're gonna have so much good food it wasn't really for this Ramadan wasn't really for this Ramadan was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have less food okay so I just want to mention this I know we have tasty foods but if for these 10 nights especially for these 10 nights just have honestly just have a bit of food for Maghrib because I've done it where I've had more than I should have food is tempting and you have more than you should have you can't stay awake that night the blood goes to the stomach you get lightheaded you feel sleepy it's so difficult to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all night or even go to sleep for a bit and wake up because your stomach is so full so try yourselves and myself as well and myself inshallah i'm going to try only have just a bit just to keep it just to keep something in there and then you'll be fresh you'll be crisp you'll be good you'll be strong and inshallah you'll be able to survive the night so may allah SWT enable us to make use of these nights may allah SWT, um, guide us may allah SWT, um, give us the ability to have our sins forgiven. May Allah SWT give us the ability to make, um, give us the ability, um, may Allah SWT give us the um, opportunity to have more nights like this. May Allah SWT enable us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. May Allah SWT enable us to wake our families up. May Allah SWT enable us to tune ourselves so we can make benefit and stay awake all these last 10 nights and earn and, and have the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and have our sins forgiven. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.